G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be using my Garmin R10 and I'm going to hook it up to E6 Connect and we're going to play nine holes. And the reason I want to do this, I know the Garmin R10 has been out for a long time. There's been a lot of videos on this, but the reason I want to do this is because I just put out a video with the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro playing E6. So I'm going to play nine holes using the Garmin. And just to show you guys currently right now how the Garmin R10 works with E6. So let's jump in. You do get the five free courses and the driving ranges with the Garmin. So we're going to jump into E6 now. Um, and first off, I'm going to show you how to connect with E6. So I've turned my Garmin R10 on and it's synced up to my iPad straight away. As soon as I opened the app, it was connected. I've gone through and I have done the device calibration, all that. Now to connect it up to E6, all you have to do is bomb out of this application, launch E6 and it will connect. I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to bomb out, launch E6 connect. And there's no messing around. You don't need to go in and connect a third party app and all that. Simply open E6 and your Garmin device has connected. And that's it. And that's how easy it is to connect not only your R10 to your mobile device. Once you've done it once, it remembers it and it will automatically connect. And then all you have to do is cl uh, close out of the application, not force close, just get out of the application, open E6 so the Garmin R10 app is running in the background, launch E6 and it connects right up without you doing anything. You don't have to do the third party connect and all that mess around. It works seamlessly. Okay, so let's jump in. I have lined my, um, I have aligned my Garmin R10, so we're going to play golf. I haven't logged in with my Garmin R10 account, so I'm going to do that now. And the only reason you want to do that is um, because it's going to keep all the stats in the background. So uh, I'm going to go join. And then what I might do is I might just go to the settings icon and I'm going to go down to preferences. Uh, it's not preferences. Let's go to security save credentials, let's turn that st to stay logged in. And now, whenever I log into E6, I'm not gonna have to log into my Garmin um, profile again. So from there, we'll go next, stroke play. Okay, so these are the courses you get with the Garmin. You do get Band and Dunes instead of the Belfry. So today we're gonna go out and play Band and Dunes. And we're gonna play the front nine. So we'll go selected holes and we'll just go front nine, and let's tee off. Okay, welcome out to Band and Dunes. And I have played this course a lot with my Garmin R10. I do love this course. It is my favorite course out of the five free courses with the Garmin. I will also today be using the RCT balls. So I'll get my RCT balls out. So in that time of messing around, the Garmin has gone to sleep. All I have to do push the power button at the back, it's gonna wake up the device and it'll connect up again and it's ready to go. It really is that simple. The connection with the Garmin is so much more simple and easy than the connection with the Rapsoda MLM2 Pro at this current stage. And I know there's been a lot of people that have said they haven't had any issues with connection so far. I am actually happy to hear that because it kind of fills me with hope. Um, and I hope that eventually everyone will have that same experience, but right now I know myself, along with a lot of other people, are really struggling with that device. Okay, enough said, let's hit a drive off this tee. As always, no warm-ups allowed. Oh, not a great first swing. Hit it a little bit out the heel, but it's down the middle, so we're happy with that, we'll take it. Let's have a look at that. I have a feeling it missed the club data there because that ball flight went dead straight. No, it got the club data, so that's all good. It just had zero for the side spin. Okay, and that's one advantage of the MLM2 Pro is you're gonna get that spin axis. I hit that out the heel, and so I should have had a little bit of gear effect and it should have faded, whereas the Garmin just went dead straight. Okay, that's left us 118 to the flag. So let's just hit a gap wedge. Now, just for reference, I do have my Foresight going. The Foresight said that that carried 254 Let's have a look at the carry on the Garmin. It says 248, so pretty close on that. Ooh, it's got a it drawing. It's got to sit. 
Okay, not bad. Don't spin off the front. 34 feet, I've got a bad feeling. Let's have a look. So uh, had spin axis there or a side spin 1700. It's given us a three putt. Okay, so just for spin axis or, or left spin, just for reference, my Foresight did have that with 1100 left spin as well. So uh, the Garmin read that or estimated that correctly. Okay, next hole's a par three. It's 200 yards to the front edge. I'm just gonna hit a five iron. This should be the right club. Okay, off the toe a little bit. And it's just got it going out right. Wasn't the best strike. And that's gonna be short. Let's have a look at the data. So we had a 178 yards carry, uh, 5,000 RPM, which the, the spin um, is perfect. I had 5,000 on my, my foresight as well. Uh, carry distance on the foresight had 195. A little bit of difference in the carry there. Now, what I usually do with my R10 is on these chip shots, I don't actually use the RCT balls because I, I find that I get a lot of random misreads. So I'm actually just gonna to switch to a normal Pro-V now for these chip shots. We've got 47 feet. We've got a bit of a bank in front of us. So we're gonna to have to hit this about maybe 10 to 15 yards carry just to get it hit into that bank and then jump forward. So let's do that. Go. Oh no. Okay, it did stay there. Give us a one putt. And the one thing I do love about the R10 is it's so good at chipping. It, the, the algorithm's gotten so refined. That's a one putt, luckily. The algorithm has gotten so refined with the Garmin that chip shots just work and they work really well. I do have a video on chipping if people are struggling with the R10 that explains how the actual radar works. So definitely check that out if you're struggling with chipping and you've got a Garmin R10. Okay, next hole's a par five. I do know this course off by heart because like I said, I've played this course a lot. Let's hit an RCT ball. Okay, decent drive there. Go on, Chase. Gotta love these big downhill shots. Not much of a bounce. It was pretty soft, the old fairways. Let's have a look at the data on that one. Um, getting a bit quicker now, 111 and 162, which is pretty good. Side spin again said zero. So to me, let's just have a look at that data. Backspin numbers, they are actually a little high. So I think that's estimated backspin because my foresight says 1900. In terms of side spin, the foresight had that as a baby draw, like a very, very slight draw. The Garmin had it going dead straight. So, I mean, not too far off, but um, just be aware that with this unit, you are gonna get that estimated shot shape, the estimated spin axis. Um, whereas with the MLM2 Pro, you're gonna get calculated. All right, 242, let's hit a hybrid. Oh, not the best strike. It's got it cutting. Stay out of that long rough. Okay, it's in the deep rough. So the Foresight had a baby draw. I did tow it a bit. Um, so I think there was a bit of gear effect there where the Garmin had that going slightly right. All right, we're in the deep rough. So again, like I said, these chip shots, I use a normal Pro-V or a normal golf ball, not an RCT, just because I find I do get some random misreads using an RCT with chip shots. Look at the power, it's taking off most of the power. So 59 feet, so 20 yards, and it looks like I'm going to have to hit this quite hard. So I'm going to have to hit this about 40 yards as a feel. Maybe a little bit less. I'll open the face a bit. Okay, pretty good execution. It definitely took all the spin off the shot there. All right, 20 feet. Hopefully we get a two putt from there. Okay, cool, two putt. So I guess with this unit, it's not gonna give you the perfect ball flight every time. We know that. It estimates the spin axis. It doesn't estimate it 100% of the time. However, for simulated golf, this thing performs amazingly. So if you're after a device 
sub $1,000. I mean, you can get these things secondhand for pretty cheap. If you're after a device purely for simulator golf, and now that we've got the connection to our laptops and we can use GS Pro with that Direct Connect, it works flawlessly. The Garmin R10, it's really hard to beat. Okay, par four, 430 yards. Let's, um, I keep going, I keep going to my computer to try and uh, aim the shot, but it's on my iPad. So uh, that's gonna give us 287 to that. That should be fine. And I do have to say, there's been some exciting news on the connector for the MLM2 Pro and GS Pro. There is a connector, it's in beta at the moment, but there is a new connector that potentially is gonna bring GS Pro to the Rapsoda MLM2 Pro. I'll have a video on that shortly, um, but just know that some clever person has worked out how to get the data from the MLM2 Pro into GS Pro. All right, fourth hole. Oh, not a good shot. Let's see where that goes. Kick. Okay, that is interesting. Not the best shot there. I will say again, the foresight, because I did tow that, um, it was one of those towed shots where the spin came down. So I towed it, the foresight had a baby draw with not a lot of spin. The Garmin actually had that fading again. So again, we're seeing the estimated shot shape being incorrect. And if you watch my videos where I did my in-depth tests, it's pretty good with the irons, but with the driver, the, the R10 does struggle because of the gear effect with spin axis. Okay, we're in deep grass again. So we've really, really hosed ourselves over here. We've got 150, um, but it's almost gonna play, you know, double that. So let's hit a five iron. And um, we're just basically just gonna give this a rip and then hopefully we end up somewhere near the green. If I'm gonna miss anywhere, miss right. Hit that really solid. Oh, sit, don't go on the green. Okay, good. Because if that went on the green there, it would have definitely given us an auto three putt. And you've really got to be careful with, when you're playing auto putt, you've really got to be careful and quite smart with um, sh shots like that. Because if I was to hit the green there, it would have been an auto three putt if it just rolled on. So you've almost got to lay up to then try and chip it close to get your par. Okay, we've got 87 feet. Now, I am gonna play this as a bump and run because I really wanna showcase the Garmin and I wanna show you what it's good at. So I'm gonna play this with like a six iron and I'm just gonna do a bump and run. Now we'll caveat this by saying, I don't practice this shot a lot. So it might not go close to the hole, but what I wanna showcase is that the Garmin is really good at picking up short, low chip shots. It's really good at that. So 87 feet, that's about 30 yards just under. So I'm just going to try and carry this about, let's go eight, eight to 10 yards as a feel. So six iron, back of the stance, bump and run. Go. Go. All right, it's got down to 11 feet. Let's see if it gives us a one putt. So let's have a look at the carry there. Carry of 28 feet and it's given us a one putt, cool. But again, I'm never in danger. I'm never thinking, oh, I really am scared. This, this isn't gonna register. It was never in doubt. The Garmin R10 is gonna pick up the chip shots. On to the fifth hole. This is a tough par four. Off the back tees, it plays very long. And the further you go down the fairway, the narrower the fairway gets. Okay, I hit that pretty good. Let's have a look at that one. Nice carry distance there. Uh, so on the foresight, just for uh, reference, we had 166 ball speed, 290 yards carry. And on the R10, we had 161, 270 yards carry. So bit of a discrepancy there. Um, I think that that one was a bit quicker than 161 ball speed. I'd put it more at about 164 in reality. Usually with the Foresight and the Garmin R10, I've done heaps of testing on this. It generally reads ball speed about two miles an hour lower than my Foresight GC2. All right, 173 yards. I'm just gonna hit a seven iron and I'm just gonna hit a little cut. So I will try and just work this one a little bit left to right, try and show off this spin axis. Okay, so you can see the R10 picked up on that. It's got it going left to right, just slightly. 
Um, and the Foresight had it with a 350 right side spin. The Garmin R10 had it 318 right side spin. So yeah, they were pretty much identical. The Foresight had 6,690 RPM and the Garmin had 6,600. So it does pick up on the irons. It does pick up that estimated spin axis quite well. Okay, 215, another tough hole. I'm gonna hit a five iron and I'm gonna work the ball right to left. I also just wanna reiterate again, I know I've said this so many times, but I just wanna reiterate that the RCT ball doesn't help with spin axis. There's been a few videos I've watched with people where they say the RCT ball helps with spin axis. It's not the case. So I just wanna be absolutely clear that the RCT only improves the backspin, not the actual shot shape. All right, so let's hit a five iron. I'm gonna hit a draw and hopefully we'll draw this back to the pin. Okay, so that's definitely drawing. Um, it didn't draw that much on the Garmin. On my foresight, it said 1,046 left spin. Let's have a look what the Garmin said. It did have a draw, but only a very, very slight draw with 116 left spin. So um, it is what it is. And we just had a three putt from 40 feet. Okay, this is quite an easy driving hole. Par four, the fairway is miles wide. Famous last words. Another good strike. Uh, so for reference, 165 ball speed. We had a baby fade on the foresight and we're talking 36 right spin. So pretty much dead straight. Let's have a look. And we had 162 ball speed. So yep, that's what we we're saying before. Uh, baby draw on the Garmin. So pretty much identical there. Um, like I was saying, the, the Garmin has slightly less ball speed than my Foresight GC2 in the testing I've done. Okay, 97 yards from the fairway. I'm two over par, so I need to start playing some good golf. Let's hit a 52, because I don't want to spin this back too much. I'm pretty sure this green slopes back to front. Going to use an RCT ball, and I'm just going to play a little three quarter 52. Might have to go a little bit. Yeah, has to go about a foot. That's perfect. All right, should get a nice little auto one putt from there. 8,400 RPM, we had 8,400 RPM. So those RCT balls are just so good with the Garmin R10. They're just so accurate. Okay, we've got another par four, hole eight. And I'm gonna try and give this one a bit. Try and swing a little bit harder. Hit it pretty good. Uh, 165 ball speed on the foresight, and we had a little bit of left spin. So 306 to the left, so a baby draw. The Garmin had that with a baby fade. Let's have a look. So, I mean, the data's pretty good. Um, just the shot shape again, the spin axis, uh, had it going to the right where the foresight had a little draw. Right, 92. What I might try and do is I really wanna show off the chipping. So I might, if I don't miss the green on the last two holes, what I might do is just go to the chipping green real quick after the round and just show off some of their short chips. Um, for this shot, I'm just gonna play a three quarter 56. That's gotta sit, I think. Spin. Okay, really good shot there. Let's have a look. Hopefully it gives us a one putt. And it did, perfect. And the spin, I had 10,000 on the foresight, 10,000 on the R10. Uh, shot shape there, just um, if you're interested, was 800 left on the foresight, so a little draw. Um, I think the Garmin had that with a little fade. All right, hole nine, par five. Um, let's try and reach this one in two. It is a long hole, so it'd be a tough ask, but we're gonna give it a crack. Oh, that was a bad swing. Felt like another toe hook. Um, and I had 800 left spin on the foresight. And it was a low spinning shot, 1600 RPM. Um, or 17, 1674. So yeah, the data there matches quite well. Okay, that's left us 300. And I'm not going to get it there. 
but I am just going to try and absolutely kill a three wood um, and get it up by the green. Oh, I hit it low on the face. Swing felt good, just a little bit low on the face. And that's not a bad leave. Okay, so that's left us 81 feet. Let's just get our 60 degree. I am switching over to a regular ball again. Um, it's a little bit uphill. Let's try and land this around 15 yards. Oh, a little short. See if it'll give us a one putt birdie from there. Come on, two putt from 15 feet. So that's not bad. I guess the main thing there that you saw, it didn't miss a shot the whole time. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly jump in and go to the practice green. So let's go back. We'll go back to the main menu. Let's go practice, go chip and putt, and we'll just go to a uh, chip and we're behind a boulder. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the golf ball to just off the green. So really short-sighted ourselves. And we've got 17 feet. Okay, so I've set it up. I've got a 17 uh, foot shot to the hole. And I just wanna show you now, the chipping with the R10 is far superior than the MLM2 Pro at this stage. I'm just gonna hit a couple of chip shots and these are gonna land about seven feet in my sim room. So that was about eight feet in my sim room. I mean, these are barely getting off the ground. Um, you can see that it picked it up. Carry distance was five feet on the unit. In reality, in my sim room, it was about eight feet, seven or eight feet. Okay, we'll go again. That one was about 11 foot carry in my sim room. And again, the device picked it up. We had a hole out, lovely. Um, and there it says 10 feet carry, so pretty close there on the carry from what I can see in my sim room. We'll go again, we'll do another short one. Okay, that was about six, maybe five, six feet in my sim room and it picked up on the shot. Had the carry distance of three and a half feet there. And I mean, this is what the MLM2 Pro needs to be like. Um, I'm sure it'll get there, it'll get better, but this is what it needs to be like. Now, to push it even further, I'm gonna hit a six iron. I'll show you that to the camera. I'm gonna hit a six iron and I'm gonna do some bump and runs from this distance. And this is really gonna push the R10. And the reason I say the MLM2 Pro can get there is because the Garmin's just doing this with a radar. The MLM2 Pro has a radar and cameras, so surely they can you know, refine their algorithm um, to take into account all the data they're getting in, and it should be better than what we're seeing with the Garmin R10. Okay, six iron bump and run from 17 feet. I'm gonna land this like three or four feet in my sim room. And it picked up on the shot. So I mean, I'll do one more. It says it carried about five and a half feet. In reality, it probably carried about four, but it's picking up on the shot. That one carried about four again, and it picked up on the shot. It's very consistent. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. If you got any comments or questions, let me know down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.